I thank him and I bless him for all that he has done. I want to try to get all of the formalities out of the way so we can move this train. I believe that God has given me something to say and it's not going to take me long to go through it. So I want to I want to make sure that I give honor to whom, to whom honor is due. First of all, thank God for our pastor who has to tip out. He's traveling and singing all across the road. But I thank God for his faithfulness to his church, to his wife, and to his family. Bless God. He's faithful. He's faithful. Thank you, Lord. And then I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. All of the mothers. Happy Mother's Day to you. Liz, is this your mom? Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited that you're all here. I'm excited to be a mother. It's one of the privileges and the joys that I have in my life is being a mother. I told you all yesterday that we're at the, um, the uh, brunch. I said, being a mother is one of the most hardest jobs ever but it's also one of the most rewarding jobs ever because you actually get to sow seeds in somebody else's life and watch them blossom. And there's going to come times where you feel like, God, did I do something wrong? And my child is not acting like they're supposed to act and not doing what they're supposed to do. But God has a way of yanking them right back on in. You are my shit. You live long enough. And you put the blood of Jesus over your children. You allow them to live, but God will bring them right back on in. And I thank God for that. I'm a living testimony. I, my children are not that old, but I see Jesus all over them. That's because in the womb, I started speaking over their lives. They didn't have a choice but to come out anointed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I thank God for all the mothers who are like me, who are not afraid to get out the good oil and sling it everywhere on your children, whether they like it or not. Put it in their shoes. Put it all over them. I know they get mad, but that's all right. The oil sticks. It sticks. And I need something that's staining in their life. You get an oil stain, it's kind of hard to get it out. You can wash it as many times as you want to, but that stain just keep on showing up. And that's why I believe in the ancient oil of God. Because all oh, those shit, because when I put it on you, it stains you. I'm not about to say I'm not. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You can't get away from it. I don't care how far you try to walk away from it. The oil is there. There's a residue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm looking at some children who are residue. You tried to get away, but your mother prayed for you. <laughs> you tried to go to another walk of life, but your grandmother got on her knees one day. And she said, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You will not have my child. And here you are in the house of the Lord today. It's because somebody prayed for you, had you on their mind, took the time to pray for you. And I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Thank you, Lord. Okay, it's not preaching time yet. Let me calm on down. Let me calm on down. But it feels good up here. Feels real good. I'm excited about it. So happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Thank God for you and all that you do. Thank God for my children. I don't know where Janae ran off to, but Janae, JL, and J4, and Mion, they're somewhere in here. You all know my children. Oh, there she is. She likes the back crows these days. We haven't figured out why, <laughs> have we? Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, she l left my baby up there by herself, Lord Jesus. Um, that's all right, I got good children, I, I understand. They're all at different stages of their life. I don't know why I decided to have my children seven years apart. So there's a big age gap there, but thank God that they're all close, they all have a relationship, and they all love Jesus. That's what's most important, amen? Amen. Let's track through this because I don't, oh, thank God for all the elders and all the pastors who are in the building. The AP, thank God that you're back. Thank you for what you taught on Thursday night Bible study. AP is a fireball. I don't know if we really realize what we have in our midst. He still pulls back on us sometime, but we pushing him out because he is a fireball and I thank God for him. I know that EP, AEP is here as well. Thank God that you're back in town. Yeah, he been flirting again with Mississippi, but we rebuking that devil in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we tell him, cancel all the flights to Mississippi. Because uh, 
I thank God for what God is doing in his life. He's raising him up in the community and in, in government and all that. And I thank God for having holy people in our government area. We need that. And these are people that call on him for advice and for things. And we need people who love God in our, in our, in our, our country and running our country. Thank God for that. Now, y'all, I don't know what's going on with this mic, but uh, if I'm doing something wrong, tell me. And I know that EP is watching. Um, you know, his son had his first football game, and so they went to support him, in which I understand. You got to be family. Y'all know it hurts my heart that Carrie and Michael ain't here, but it's okay. <laughs> We're going to go on and do the work of the Lord, but I know that they are watching and they are praying for us as well. So I thank God for the pastors, all the elders that are in the house. I thank God for you. Elder Nicole had no choice but to be here. She knows why. She has no choice but to be here. And Elder LaVon, too, you have no choice but to be here. I thank God for all of you who have come out to this early morning, 10 o'clock service. Give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a hand. It's, it's a change for us. It's a change for us. You know, we used to that afternoon praise. We normally call that the club crowd because usually when you go to the club on Saturday night, you can't get up that early so you have a 1.30 service because the people in the club need Jesus too. They do. They got, probably got a little bit more reason to praise God than you do because they survived some bullets in some dangerous situations the night before. So they got a reason, so we provide a space for them. But thank God for the early morning saints who want to come out to hear this 10 o'clock morning service. All right, let's do this. You know, Pastor JJ opened us up in the series, um, and he was teaching about uh, the baptism of water, the baptism of fire, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he preached on last Sunday, um, and he also did, he opened the series up in our um, corporate prayer, and he taught a mighty word. He tracked through that real good. His title was, The Fire Made Me Better. And if you didn't see it, you need to go back and watch it. You need to go back and watch corporate prayer because it's so important that you don't just listen to the word of God and don't listen to anything else all week. The enemy tries to come in so many ways and everything you heard on Sunday, he will try to tear down on Monday. So you need to go ahead and go back and watch that. He spoke about the thing that stuck out to me. He said so much, but the thing, one of the things that stuck out to me is he was talking about the refining process. And how sometimes we have to go through these fiery trials um, and God allows them. It's not that God, um, God makes them happen, but God allows them to happen for the purpose of refinement. And, and the refining fire is what makes you better. You put gold in the fire. After they dig it up from the ground, they put it in the fire to get out all of the impurities and all the things. And you need that too. You need to get all of that jacked upness that you got inside of you. You know, you got some ways, you got some ways that God wants to prune and God wants to refine in you and God will allow these things, these circumstances and stuff to happen in your life because he wants to help you work on you. God knows what's inside of you and he wants to get that side of you that will wow out. You know, the side of you that will go from zero to 10 in 10 seconds because somebody called you out, called you out your name or somebody talked about you or something and you feel like you got to go back out at, at them with words. That's the part of you that God wants to do something with. He wants to change that. And, you know, I'm not here to re-preach Pastor JJ's message, but I was, last week I was sitting over in my little gray chair and I said, Lord, we, we got to be like the psalmist. I believe it was David. There's some, some back and forth about who wrote it, but I believe it was David. And he said, Lord, their hearts, which mean my enemies' hearts are callous. But, but in, in an NLT, NLT version, it says their hearts are dull and stupid. Yeah, he was talking about his enemies. He said, their hearts are dull, they're callous. He said, but I delight in your law, right? And he said, now I know you're gonna find yourself in someone, this is God saying, I know you're gonna find yourself in some trifling situation with some people who may act a little crazy. But then David turned around and said, it was good for me that I was afflicted. It was good for me. It was good for me that you betrayed me. It was good for me that you talked about me. It was good for me because what did I do? I might learn God's statutes. Now I can look you in your face and now I can testify. Now I can tell you that God loves you too. In spite of what you did to me, in spite of the trap that you set up to me, I can look you square in your face and instead of cussing, I found the name of Jesus. 
And here is my opportunity to witness to you. You don't have to be as angry as you are. Clearly you're angry. Clearly there's something in your heart that you need to get out. But I serve a savior who can do anything. Thank you, Lord. Y'all sit down. Y'all making me feel like I got to preach. Make me nervous. Yeah, because, you know, I, I found out in my life that I, too, have been around some people and I have been ridiculed almost for forgiving the people who have done me wrong. But my explanation to that is that I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I live in a different set of, I know it looks strange and some people think I'm weird, but I operate a little bit differently because I'm, I'm applying the laws of the Lord to my life. And that's going to look strange to some people and I understand that, but I'm, gonna, not gonna, I'm not going to let somebody else's stupidity and dullness keep me out of my heavenly inheritance. I'm going to get everything that God want me to get. Everything that's mine, I'm going to take it. Um, Genesis 50 and 20, I believe it was Joseph who was talking to his brothers. He said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for my good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many souls. So you go on with your bad self and then do what you die to do. And I got to ease in my office just for a second, just to let some of you know that God is coming to you. He's coming down your lane because he wants to burn up the spirit of revenge. Somebody wants to get back at somebody for something they did. But God said, I'm here to refine that now. I'm here to turn that revenge button off of you. I'm here to curtail your attitude. I'm here to reconstruct the way you live your life. Y'all looking at me, but I believe you're looking at me like that because you know it's you. I know everybody don't want to raise your hand, but some of y'all like revenge. It feels good, but God said, I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to deal with that. You don't have to take matters into your own hands. God said, I'll do your, I'll fight your battles. If you would hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles, victory is going to be yours. Yeah, Joseph and his brothers were afraid that after their father died that they, Joseph was going to seek revenge and he was going to come back and get them for what they had did. But they didn't understand that God had already changed Joseph's heart. By the time they got back to Joseph, Joseph was like, it's above me now. <laughs> it's above me now. I'm not there anymore. I'm, I'm not where I was. I'm not the angry person I once was. I'm, I'm not bitter about what you did because I realized that God has something greater for me and I don't have time to fight these little petty battles. I need to be going to get what God has for me. It's hard enough to live in this world on my own. I don't need any extra baggage in trying to figure out what you're doing and what kind of scheme you're playing on me and what kind of trick. I don't have time for that. It's above me now. It's above me now. I'm not there anymore. But I'm going to move on because that wasn't my message. But I did hear a preacher in New York. His name was Bishop Figaro. And he said, you can touch me now. It don't hurt no more. <laughs> what you did don't hurt no more. You can touch me now. You can come. You can, you can, you can talk to me. It's all right. It, it don't hurt me no more. I love that message. But anyway, let me go on to my message. I told Pastor Jay, I said, you taught a wonderful message. But I probably should have gone first. And the reason why I should have gone first is because what I'm getting ready to tell you today is very foundational, very foundational. So I want us to turn in our Bible to Matthew 3, uh, 13. And I, I, I don't know if we could put it up in the KJV first. I would prefer that. I'm going to read it in a different um, version, but if you can put it up in the KJV, that would be great. And I promise y'all, if y'all push me, we're going to be out of here real quick. Now, if y'all want to stay and play around, I, you know, I know what to do. <laughs> Matthew, you can stand on your feet. Matthew 3, and I'm going to read 13 through 17, and we're going to read it first in the King James Version. Okay. All right, let's go. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me? And Jesus answered said, and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Verse 16 is where I'm really going to be pulling from today. And it says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway 
which means immediately out of the water. And lo, somebody say, and lo. And lo. You can't leave no words out in the Bible. They're there for a reason. So say, and lo. And lo. The heavens were opened up unto him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And in 17 says it again, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. All right, you may be seated. I'm going to read it again in the NLT version just for further clarification. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized of you, he said, so why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. And verse 16 is, after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And the voice from heaven said, This is my dearly beloved Son who brings me great joy. I want to talk to you for uh, as brief as moments as I can around the subject of there's something in the water. Something in the water. And do they, do they have a screen for me? Yes. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, Kai. Something in the water. Kai has a way of doing things that when she does graphics, they push me. Kai's graphics are prophetic. And if you ever sit and you look at what she has drafted up, any, anybody who is prophetic in here can look at that picture and just go. Just go into the prophetic because it speaks to you. It stirs something in you. So that's why I wanted to see what she did. But thank you, Kai, for that. And I need you all to put on your spiritual ears uh, when I'm speaking to you today because there is a revelation to be understood and comprehended, and I want to make sure that you understand it. Um, there is a concept in the world of theology called the law of first mention. And it says that anytime you find a principle, a thought, or a theme, or any presentation in the scripture, the idea is that the theologian will then go back to where that thought was first mentioned in the scripture. So if you find something in Revelation or in John or any of the Gospels or some anywhere in the Bible, it is a good thing to go back and see where that was first mentioned. Because the law of first mention then tells the scholar the foundations of that thought, what the original intent was, what it was meant to be, and how God applied it in the beginning. Therefore, what you can do is you can carry that same theme and that same thought over into the present or over into what you're reading now, and ultimately it would bring out a deeper, more relevant understanding. Do you understand what I mean? So for that reason, we need to revisit the beginning. We need to go back to see how this all started because there's something in the water. Genesis 1, 1 and 2, 1 through 2 says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now the Bible says that the earth was formless. Formless is a Hebrew word called tohu. And it means that there's chaos and confusion and it's a, a waste place and it's a very empty place and it's void. There's nothing there. And it says that darkness was over the surface of the deep. Now that doesn't sound like right offhand anywhere that God would want to be. But the scripture says that the spirit of the Lord was hovering. Yeah, my Shayanda. He was hovering over the waters, hovering, hovering, hovering. There's a Hebrew word that it means rahaf. I can't say it like they do, but it's rahaf. And rahaf means to flutter or to move or to shake, to quicken. But he's doing it with the sort, with the with the intent in mind is I'm taking delight in this. I'm getting ready to do something. So, so you ask the question: Why would God rahaf over my tahu? <laughs> Why would God be moving over my chaos to take delight? 
keep in mind it was still dark too there was no light so all you can see is the spirit of the Lord hovering what looks to be a mess and you're like God why are you here I don't really understand and most people tell me that God don't dwell in mess and I don't understand why you would be hovering over this water but the only logical answer I can come up with mother green is that God must have looked at it and saw value in it Pastor Trina, you mean to tell me that God can look at my chaos and take delight in it? Yes, because he sees what it will become. This may sound crazy, but I am convinced that God has a plan for your chaos. Yeah, now you heard the scripture, all things work together for the good. Well, that must have meant something was bad at some time. But if all things are going to work together, it must mean that God is somewhere pulling the pieces together. Let me tell you, God, it didn't, chaos just didn't start now. Chaos was there from the very beginning, as we see in the scripture, and God has a history of working in it. Let's track through this real quick. Keisha gave me that word. Let's track through this, track through this journey real quick. Let's start with the story of Cain and Abel. It's a bit chaotic to have one brother killing another just because their sacrifices were different. Sounds like chaos to me. Then there was a story of Jacob and Esau and started, the chaos actually started in the womb. And on their father's deathbed, Jacob goes to his, Jacob goes to his mother, Rebecca, and they conspire to cheat Esau out of his blessing. And then Esau tries to kill Jacob. What kind of family chaos is this? What kind of mess is this going on in this family? You think your family got drama. Let me show you some more. Then there's a story of Joseph and his brothers, which I still blame the daddy because Jacob, why would you give your, your son, your youngest son, a full-on sparkly coat in front of all of his brothers? Why would you do that? That's like coming down on Christmas Day and only having a gift for one, but you got 11 others standing there saying, what about me? Might cause some chaos, but that's not it. Then there was Rachel and Leah. First of all, y'all are married to the same man. That's a hot mess. There's obviously envy and jealousy there. It's a whole bunch of chaos. But let me tell you something. If you track the genealogy of Jesus, you will find that all of these stories I just told you, you will find them in his ancestry page. <laughs> That's because God knows the outcome. He knew that the outcome would be Jesus. And then he knew if there was Jesus that there would be you and me. So God hovers over the chaos. He hovers over it because he sees what it will become and who it will produce. All you see is the beginning, but God sees the end. All you see is the now, but God sees what's coming. All you see is the input, but God sees the output. All you see is what's coming in, but God sees the outcome. Thank you, Jesus. Leads me to believe that God is not afraid of your chaos. In fact, he's quickening over it. <laughs> yeah, he's hovering down. You ever watch a bird just hover over something? Or you ever be in an airplane and they can't land yet, so they just hover over a specific area? Yeah, that's what God is doing over your chaos. I told you, we can't say things. I don't know why we do this. We get into these cliches and we say, God don't bless no mess. Let me tell you something, saints. We have got to stop using these cliches and quoting them like they're the good gospel. Because you could be disinviting God to something that he can find delight in. You can't take it. That doesn't mean that God can't take it. I know we mean well, but we got to watch our mouths. Truth of the matter is that God sent his son for your chaos. He sent his son because he knew you couldn't handle it. He sent his son to clean me up. He sent his son because I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very, 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 very deeply stained within. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea. Something in the water. The master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the water, he lifted me. And now safe am I. It was love who lifted me when nothing else could help. It was his love who lifted me. 
Yeah, that's why I believe that God can still find, find, find treasure in these things that we go through. But let me calm down because we're talking about water. And I just tell your neighbor, there's something in the water something in the water. Come on, you ought to invite him in. Maybe that was your moment to say, God, I give up, but I just invite you in. Have your way in this mess of mine. I don't even know how it got this bad. I blinked my eyes and one day something just went awry and I used to speak to this person, but they said something crooked and now it's just a mess. God, I need your help to pull it in. Hover over this mess. Dwell here. Move whatever is in your way. Whatever took your place. Dwell here, Jesus. Dwell here. So, 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 so here we are in Genesis. And we're talking about the water. And like I said, there's no light yet. It's just water. It's just chaos. And water. There's a Hebrew word. Y'all, I love Hebrew and Greek, so please excuse me. But there's a Hebrew word for water, and it's called mime. It's really spelled with an apostrophe, so it's Mayim, but we call it, they pronounce it Mime. All right, so here it is, God is over the Mime. And in the sixth verse, we see that God separates the water from the water. He separates the Mime from the Mime. And he places in the middle of it a vault. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. So now what we did have is all water. Now we, because God placed a vault in the middle, there's water on top and then there's water on the bottom. I need you to go with me in the spirit because God has a way of birthing something in the water. Yeah, 2 Peter 3 and 5 said the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water by water. And I'm proving to you in the scripture right now, there is no doubt that there is something in the water that changes things. The Bible says that he quickened with delight over the chaos, over the mind. And then Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 said he separated the mind from the mind and he birthed a vault in the middle. And that vault was creating an atmospheric space for his working. Isaiah confirms this in chapter 44, verse 24. It says, the Lord spoke to him and said, I am the Lord, the maker of all things, who stretches out the heavens and who spreads the earth myself. God did it. It's all God. It's all God who saw the chaotic waters. It's all God who birthed the vault in the middle because even in chaos, he'll always get the glory. And that vault I'm talking about is a firmament. It's called the sky now, but God placed it there because he needed a space to create and he needed a space to host heavenly objects. He separated the water from the water and placed the vault in the middle. So, so, so now we have an atmospheric solid that houses the rain, the snow, the sleet, the fog, the mist, all of the precipitation. It was all the workmen of God's craftsmanship. Now, I don't care what you subscribe to. This ain't no Big Bang Theory. This ain't none of that other stuff. This is God fixing what was broke. It's God fixing what was chaotic. Oh, I hope you're getting this because I'm saying something in the spirit. It's God who put things in their proper place. Then, of course, we have the precipitation that comes beneath as the oceans, the seas, the ponds, the lakes, the rivers, and all of that we know of. Then in Genesis 6, let's flip over. Genesis 6. We see that the story of Noah begins and, and, and God opens up the mime in the sky and he opens up the mime of the land and the water from above and the water from below destroys the earth. But he even told Noah, build an ark. I'm going to put something in the water. I'm going to put something that's going to carry you through this flood. I'm going to put something and construct something there that will help you go through all of this. I don't care who's talking about you, Noah. I don't care who's telling everybody, oh, you see Noah's making a mess over there. There's about to be a flood and he's trying to build something in the water. God is saying, yes, I'm going to birth something there to hold you up. That's where chaos meets the care of God. You think nobody cares about your problems. God does. And he's birthing something in the water to help you ride through the storm. Woo! My God. Then in Exodus, he did it again. He separated the mime from the mime and the waters from the water so that the children of Israel can walk through. And then he closed up the water to eat up their enemies. Once again, God is birthing a space in the water where you can come through. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take all of that evidence, all of that that we established in the beginning of time, and we need to apply it to our text. So here we go now in Matthew. 
we see that John is already baptizing people. John is, is famous for this. He's, he's the one that's baptizing. There are people coming everywhere, but these people were sinners. They were people who were newly into Christ, I should say. And they were getting this baptism. They were newly converted into salvation. They were coming from everywhere. And it was a sign that there was a washing. There was a washing. There was a washing that was happening to signify that they have a new clean life in Jesus. So when Jesus told John that you need to perform this act on me, Don was like, no way. I can't do that. He said, I'm not worthy. I'm not even worthy to tie your shoes, much less to dip you in this water. And John is like, here I am preaching the kingdom, but you are the kingdom. Here I am talking about the savior. You are the savior. How is it that I am worthy of baptizing you in the water? You have no sin. You don't need to be washed. But Jesus, <laughs> Jesus knew that this should not be taken lightly. He knew that this was more than a simple baptism. This was what they called the baptizo. For those of you who are Bible scholars, you know where I'm going. This is what they call the baptizo. This is what, here they go, destiny. This is what they call the immersion. <laughs> this is what you mean. You've got to get all the way in. You've got to be consumed by this thing. You've got to go deeper than what's on the surface. You've got to, you've got to be immersed in this. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus knew that it was the fulfillment of all righteousness. He knew that the mind needed to be separated from the mind once again because he knew that there was something in the water. There was a birthing that was supposed to take place. And you, you, you've got to understand that Jesus was about to enter into his ministry phase of his life. He was about to be led into the wilderness and tempted by Satan. So Jesus had to be equipped in public. He had to be equipped in public for the next level of his life. This, 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 and I'm, I'm getting ready to show you, but, but this anointing from God, and, and it may be for somebody in here too, and I want you to grab a hold of it. If it's for you, I don't care who's looking at you, who's doing anything, but, but the, this next anointing that Jesus needed to get, um, this immersion process, it was a transitional anointing. Somebody needs to receive that because somebody's in transition. Uh, you, you're needing to go to the next level. And, and God wants to prepare you for that. He, he wants to get you for, for higher heights and deeper depths. I know we don't like that kind of talk no more. But, but, but there's a crossing over that needs to take place. And the Holy Spirit told me it's from one level to the next. Somebody is going from one level to the next. It's a necessary equipping for what you're going to go through. And it has to happen in public. It's a public declaration. It's a, it's a public transition that's taking place. It's, it's, a, it's an announcement that for God I'll live and for, for God I'll die. It's an announcement that I'm, I'm dying to myself. I'm, I'm dying to my flesh. When I go down in this water, there's a transition that's about to happen. There's a new level of anointing. There's a new grace that's going to take place. I've got to be immersed in this. There's got to be some witnesses to what God is doing. Because not only do God have greater works for you, but not only do, is there a new grace on your life, not only is he calling you to hire and he's growing you, not only is he strategically placing you, but right along with that, you knew that Jesus was going to face some accusers. And so are you. You're going to face some accusers. God knew that there would be people against him. God knew that people would try to kill him. God knew that Je all that Jesus would have to withstand. So he said, you need a greater anointing deal with some of this stuff that we got to deal with. I need a greater anointing. I can't do this by myself because in my flesh dwells no good thing. God, I need your anointing. I need, I need you to direct me. I need you to lead me. I need to hear you when I wake up in the morning. I need to hear you in the afternoon when I'm eating lunch. I need to hear you before I go to bed. I need to hear you. I need to be cautious about where I'm moving and be cautious about who I sit next to and be cautious about where I go and who atmosphere that I am. I need your anointing. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You need a greater anointing to deal with some of this stuff. Uh, uh, God knew that the, that the formlessness of this dark, corrupt world would be facing Jesus. And, and God knows that the formlessness of this corrupt world is facing you. God knew the chaos that he would have to hover over. But he knew Jesus, because he had the mind of God, he knew that I have to go through this immersion uh, so that no conviction or, or no accusation will be able to stick. I don't know if you caught that. I don't know if you caught that, but there's a fulfillment that happens in your immersion. There, there's something that happens that even though the enemy tries to come against you, it won't stick. <laughs> let them go ahead let the accusations fly let them say I ain't got nothing to prove to nobody I know who my savior is all these accusations will not stick let the chips fall where they may let God be God <laughs> yeah 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 let, the, let God be God let, let him do what he gonna do so here we go Jesus goes in the water and the mime from the mime is being separated. And the Bible uses a word that says straightway. That means immediately. Straightway. As he goes down in the mime and as he comes back up, he, he switches from the hands of John to an appointment with God himself. I want you to understand what's happening when you go down in the water. You're switching sides. It's like I'm, I'm going from the hands of the person who's dunking me to my appointment with God. I'm not coming up the same. See, that's the problem. Too many of you went down in the water and you came up the same. Some of you need to let the water sit on you. Don't even give me a towel. Let it just sit on. Let it marinate in my spirit. Let the rivers just flow all on me. I don't want to wipe God off. Let it soak up into my skin until it gets in the inside and it changes my blood and it changes the way I think and it changes the way I I talk and it changes the way I walk and all of a sudden you don't want to be in my company anymore because you realize there's a magnet that's drawing you there's something that's drawing you wanting to go closer to Jesus that's the anointing of God yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord he had an appointment with God himself and as a result not only did the water separate from the water but this time, that vault that we were talking about back in Genesis, that vault cracked open. And this time it was not rain, but this time it was the Holy Spirit coming down to rest on him like a dove. The Holy Spirit rested on Jesus. So, so I get it now. I get it. There, there, there's something in the water that activates the vault. Meaning, meaning you have to go down in order to activate what is above. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm going down every chance I get. I tell you to tell your neighbor, say, it's going down. All of this bad attitude, it's going down. All of it, it's going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether, whether it's an act of falling on my knees to activate heaven or, or whether it's the act of humility that I have to give to someone who's acting up. Whatever it is, if I have to put on my humility to activate the Father's hand, then that's just what I'm going to do. It could be the act of immersion in water. We getting ready to do a baptism. Somebody's going down. Somebody's going down and they're coming up different. Yes, Lord, because there's something in the water. Thank you, Lord. So you say, I'm almost done too. Y'all better jump if you're going to jump now. It'd be real good. So you say, prophetess, what does that mean for me? Well, since you called me by my name, let me prophesy. When Matthew was, y'all don't play with me because we can go there. It's only 12 o'clock. We got a little bit of time. Let me tell you this. Let me show you this in the scripture because I don't want you to think I was, mess I was making this up. Y'all know I don't operate like this unless God comes on me and tells me to do so. But when Matthew was recounting what happened, he said Jesus went down in the water and he said, and lo. I told you, you got to be careful what these words mean in the Bible. You can't skip them out because lo means suddenly. <laughs> low means low means that there's a change of scenery that's about to happen uh, uh, that word low was put there to emphasize 
emphasize that there's a call getting ready to happen. Um, it's an attention to detail that was not there before. It's an immediate change of scenery. It means suddenly something's going to switch for me. Yeah, God. And in your chaotic times and in your chaos, what you've got to do is immerse yourself because there's a separation that's getting ready to happen. And the mime is getting ready to separate from the mime. And there's going to be a suddenly, 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 suddenly there's a change of scenery for you. Oh, I see this. I see this in the spirit. A separation is going to happen. And then there's going to be a crack in the vault of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prison walls about to be broken for you. There's a suddenly going to take place because there's something inside of you, Jessica, that has to be birthed out. Woo! Jesus! There's a birthing process getting ready to happen, and it's very notable. You ever go to, oh, you pregnant woman, you understand that when you go to the doctor, one of the first things they ask you is, did your water break yet? Did your water break yet? Woo! Ask your neighbor, did your water break? Did your water break? If it hasn't break, then let me break it for you. The doctor's got some tools that you may not even be ready. But when those contractions hit the right temperature and when the heat really get turned up in your body, the doctor will come in with something long. And he said, I got to stick you with this because I've got to break the water because even the doctor knows that there's something in there that has to come out. There's something inside of you that has to get out. And so we're here to break your water today. Yes, God. Yes, God. There's something in the water that has to come out. The mime has to be separated from the mime. And life is about to come forth. There's something in the water that's about to change your life. So here we go. Here we go. I need you. I need you. I need you to pull on yourself. Come on, let's stand up. I'm not even going to be tracked through the rest of this. I need you to pull on yourself. Because you know, you know, you know what you've been sitting on. You know what's in your belly. You know the value of what God put inside of you. And I'm telling you here on this Mother's Day, you're going to become a mother of something great. It doesn't have to be a physical child. It could be something that God has placed in your heart. But it's time for you to give birth to it. So I want us to go up in the praise and begin to thank God. Lord, this don't feel good. My water breaking doesn't feel good. But there's something in the water that has to live. There's something in the water that has to give birth. The mind needs to be separated from the mind. The vault in heaven needs to be cracked open on my behalf. My family is in trouble. My life is in trouble. My job is in trouble. My mind is in trouble. And I've got to get out of me what you put inside of me. Yes! Whoa! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Woo! Thank you. It doesn't feel good. Contractions don't feel good. But there's something in the water. There's something living on the inside of you. And you've been trying to ignore it for a very long time. You've been trying to silence what God has been speaking to you at night. You've been trying to forfeit his inheritance for you. Thinking you got a better way. But God's way is the best way. Yay! God's answer is the best answer. And I yield to him today. And I say, Lord, break my water. Woo! Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Somebody is having one of those moments where there's a low. Low, suddenly. Suddenly, something's going to change for me. Something's going to switch up for me. I want you to mark the day. I want this day to go down in history, that this is the day. I know we got baptism coming, and maybe baptism will be another marker for you, but today is the day where I made my decision. I made my decision that there's no more playing games with it. There's something in the water that God is trying to birth out of me, and I've got to get it. You can be baptized right here with the Holy Spirit. You can 
to be baptized with the fire of God. The water is coming. The water is coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But you can ask God to flood your life right now. Flood me, Jesus. I'm ready for it. Flood me. As a matter of fact, I'm taking down my umbrella. I'm taking down the safety net. Flood me, Jesus. Flood me, Jesus. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Mm. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm waiting because I see somebody's trying to break. Somebody's trying to break. Let's stay there in the spirit. Somebody's trying to break. God, we thank you for what is transpiring right now in the spirit. Somebody is soaking this word up. Somebody is getting all that they need from God. Somebody's ready to step out and be bold about it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes to the immersion. Have complete control. God, let us drown in it. It's time to go deeper in God. It's time to get the deep things of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. I'm going to end it because I promised. I promised that we were going to be out at a certain time. But I want to pray for those who know this is for you. You know that there's something in the water that you need. You need it. And now's your time. Now's your opportunity. You don't have to wait. Now's your opportunity. You can say on Mother's Day, on Mother's Day, I realized that there's something in the water for me. And I'm going to stop playing around. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop playing around. I'm just going to let it flood my life. If that's you, come on down to the altar. We will make time to pray. Yes, Lord, we will make time. We will make time. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Elders, will you just begin to pray? Thank you, Lord. You don't have to lay hands, but I want us to begin to pray and make sure we're lifting up a sound. Let's lift up a sound that the floodwaters make. The floodwaters are not silent. Come on, come on, come on. The whole house can do that. The floodwaters are not silent. The waves crashing is not silent. It's not a silent sound. Come on, lift up your voice, saints. Let's begin to pray for those and push them. Sometimes you need a little push. Sometimes you get a little scared to step out in the water, but then your friend will come and push you. And this is just the push you need. You need to be pushed out into the water. You need to grab a hold of what God has for you. There's something inside of you. There's something inside of you. There's something inside of you. Someone's water needs to break. Somebody's water needs to break. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because there's something inside of you that needs to come forth in the name of Jesus. No more stagnation. In the name of Jesus. You've been sleeping on ideas too long. God says it's time to bring it out in the name of Jesus. There's something in your water, something in your belly. There's a hope of us. There's a hope there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yay! For the push that she needs, Jesus, to step out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the hand of God be upon you. In the name of Jesus. For the vision. God said, This is for the vision. This is for the vision that I've given you. This is for the dreams that you dream. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Water flow, your never shake. There's something in the water. In the water flow, your never so In the name of Jesus. God is bottling up your tears. There's something in the water for you. Yeah, never say. Yeah, yeah, never so. Flow, flow, flow. Flow, flow, flow. Mind, be separated from mind. And let the mashe and let the vault from heaven crack open. Yeah, never Holy Spirit, descend upon her. Yeah, and rest with her. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Curse be broken in your family line. In the name of Jesus. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on it. Let it intensify. An immersion is happening. An immersion is happening. Stay off the sidelines. Jump deep in the water. And find out what's in there of God. Yay! The anointing of God. Be over your life. In the name of Jesus. Flow. Flow. In the name of Jesus. God's putting the pieces back together again. He's putting the pieces back together again for you. Flow Jesus. Flow Jesus. Flow Jesus. She's weary, God. But flow Jesus. The anointing of God. Flow in her life. Something in the water for you. There's something in the water for you. Surround her, God. In the name of Jesus. Surround her, God. In the name of Jesus. You won't sink in it. You won't die in it. You won't perish in it. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. God is telling some of you to let go of what you're trying to hold on to. God said, if you get in the water, there's something else in there for you. If you get back in the water, there's something else in there for you. Let the water flow. Let the water flow. Immerse her, Jesus. Immerse her, Jesus. Let her be drunk in your spirit. Let her experience what it is to lack nothing. Everything she put her hands to, you anointed in the name of Jesus. Oh! Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit flow. Holy Spirit flow in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the arm of soul. In the arm of Bashe. In the name of Jesus. Spirit flow in his life. Anda Bashe. Give him the boldness that he needs to cut it off. For your soul. Oh God, cut it off. Cut it off. God said, get back in the water. Get back in the water. Flow. Yeah. A heavy dose of you, God. In the name of Ramoshe. In the name of Jesus. Give her the boldness. Give her the boldness to leap forward in you. Leap forward. Leap forward. Leap forward in you. Let it flow. 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 Oh Jesus, the anointing of God, the anointing of God, the anointing of God, purge her Jesus, purge her, the anointing of God, flow in her, in the name of Jesus, let it change her community, change her environment, in the name of Jesus, let the anointing of God shock herself, in the name of Jesus, it's in the water, it's in the water, it's in the water, it's in the water, it's in the water. It's in the water. Let the water flow. Flow, Jesus, flow. Flow. Flow, Jesus, flow. Flow, flow, Jesus, flow. We break every tie. We break every curse. In the name of Jesus, we break her free today. We break her water today. In the name of Jesus, let her flow. Let her flow. Let her flow, Jesus. Let her almost yield. 
yield, yield, yield in the name of Soya. Yield in the name of Jesus. Yield in the name of Jesus. Flow, Jesus, flow. Flow, Jesus. Until nothing looks the same. Until nothing looks the same. There's so many things around you that needs to be changed. God change it until nothing looks the same. In the Nanabosoya, in the Nanaboshe, take her out into the deep waters. In the name of Jesus. Oh, flow Jesus. Oh, flow Jesus. Flow Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Flow God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Flow in her, God. Flow in her, Jesus. Lord of the Boshe and Yeah, the Boshe. Yeah, God. Flow in her, Jesus. Flow, God. Flow, God. Flow, God. Lord of the Boshe and Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Breathe life in the name of Jesus. I speak life. I speak life in the name of Jesus. I speak life in the name of In the name of Jesus. Life, 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 life. So you're the anointing of God. The anointing to flow. The anointing to come out of routine. No more routine. Yeah. Welcome back to the gathering place. Yes, welcome yes. back, family. We know today's service Oof. has been amazing. As you can hear, we're still they still going up <laughs> yes. in the house. They still going up. <laughs> and to, you know why? Yeah. Because there is something in the, the water. water. Yes, yes. <laughs> Pastor Trina taught that thing. Oh my goodness. She that taught was it. So good. She took us back to the old testament. She, matter of fact, she took us back to the beginning. To the beginning. In the beginning. Okay, when God created the heavens yeah. and the earth. I mean, she took Listen, it back. It was so good. It was so good. I yes. think for me, just even hearing her teach on giving us the, the Hebrew uh, oh, yes. language, what saying the mom separated mom, the yes. mom. Come on here now. The she water separated teaching. the water. Yes. But it was just an amazing word, yes, sis. I, I'm still chewing on it, yes. soaking on it. <laughs> but like she said, like God hovers. Uh, he hovers our chaos. He, hovers he, mm. he literally comes and gets down in the yes. water with us and cleanses us from all of the things that he's trying to strip us from. That's so, Pastor it. Trina, thank you so much for an amazing Mother's yes. Day message. It was powerful. And by the way, happy Mother's Day. Yes, happy Mother's yes. Day. Shout out to the Woe Ministry yes. for blessing oh. all the moms today. What? I'm telling you, that was so beautiful. Yeah, Just was. seeing um, Mama Green. Mother Green. Mother yep. Green. Mm-hmm. Um, Shout out to you, to you Elder Mother Kathy. Green. Ha- happy Mother's Day, yes. Elder Kathy. Yes. yes. Just such a blessing. It's so much. It's such a blessing to have wisdom. Yeah. Women of wisdom. Yes. In the house. It is. That you can glean from yeah. and look at as a role model. Yes. So we love you. We love you. Shout out to all our champions. Yes. Shout yes. out to all the champions. We love you guys. So it's been a wonderful, fun, packed Mother's Day weekend. Yeah. Um, I was telling you, I started on Friday celebrating yeah. with my mom, <laughs> but then we were here yesterday day for yeah. the mother's day brunch and it was such a wonderful time so again shout out to the woe ministry yes um so we just want to wish you a happy mother's day and we just want to reiterate some of our announcements um don't forget to sign up it's in the know for baptism yes we are um we are doing baptisms at the end of the month mm-hmm. on pentecost yes pentecost pentecost sunday, sunday may 28th yes mm-hmm. yes so make sure you sign up though it's in the know so that you can go ahead and sign up um if you need to be baptized for the first time or like pastor trina said if you need to go down again again <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Don't be afraid to sign up to be baptized. And it was one more announcement. Um, um we have the paint and sip coming yes. up again for the marriage ministry, yes. May 19th. Yes, yes. We have our community conversations oh, yes. coming up May 20th. And then also to all of our young adults, mm-hmm. come in the house yes. early next Sunday at 12 p.m. Yes. We are doing a young adult check and we're going to start implementing this, you guys. So shout out to the Generations yes. team. Shout out to the young adults. We're about to start doing our young adult check-ins on nice. this Sunday. It's going to be third Sunday. So yes. yes, come in the house. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. We Make can't sure wait to see y'all. y'all. here in the house. Amen. Well, we just hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. I mean, we are just so excited. It's just, I feel so full of yeah. God and we're just still chewing on that word. But we want to leave in excitement and with joy and with the word of God, um, still just just brewing on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're just digesting that. And go back, with, like yes. Pastor Trina said, throughout this week, yes. meditate on the word, hearing again, because she gave us so oh, many nuggets. So much. 
and we really got to like chew it yes. all. It's, go, it's going to be a lot to kind of digest That's just it. from today. That's so it. make sure you go back, yes. guys, throughout the week and just listen to the replay. You mm-hmm. can catch it on our Facebook page Amen. Amen. as well as our YouTube page yes. at All Nations Washington, D.C. So family, we hope you guys have an amazing yes. rest of your day. To all the moms, again, happy yes. Mother's Day. Yes. We love you. Yes. We pray that you have an amazing, blessed day today. Yes. And, and even, I want to say one more thing. Mm-hmm. Those that are grieving today, yes. if you lost your mom, just know that we empathize with yes. you and we are praying for you. We're praying right now that God will just be a comfort for you today Absolutely. because we can't. We understand how tough that that can be. So those that have lost their mom or their grandmother, um, we're praying for you today on this Mother's Day. Absolutely. Amen. 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 So we love you guys. Love you guys. And we just pray that you have a blessed week and we will see you at Bible study on this Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. along and they just push you real quick you know I was watching the other day them teaching babies how to swim and this baby had to be little maybe no bigger than that baby there six I don't know how old the baby is six months seven months I can't see but that's a big baby oh oh I didn't see well no this baby I saw was smaller this baby was like six or seven months old and the father just threw the baby in the water but you know what that baby did It rose to the top. It rose right to the top. You don't have to be intimidated by the size of anything. You don't have to be intimidated by the plan of God for your life. Even beyond salvation, some people are intimidated by stages and microphones and what am I going to say? And if they call my name, who am I going to, what am I going to do? And how's it going to come out? How's it going to sound? It's, it's going to sound different than Elder Nicole. It's going to sound different than Pastor Trina. It's going to sound different than Pastor JJ. And that might not be, what are you afraid of? Okay, I'm going off in a tangent. <laughs> But I don't want you to be intimidated. I don't even want you to be intimidated by joining the church. If I go to church, they're going to be looking at me and they're going to be judged. Can't nobody in here judge nobody. Because if we open up a microscope on everybody's life, we're going to see some things. Put a microscope under your life. We're going to see some things too. Underneath all the makeup and all the dress and everything else, we all got something so you don't have to be. And that's one thing I love about All Nations DC is this summer, everybody in here. Can I be bold with you? There might be somebody drunk or high in here right now. We got it all. But come on in. I bet you the fire of God will sober you real quick. <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all know that, right? All right. Does anybody want to make Anwa DC their home? If not, we're going to leave. I don't think there's anything else I was supposed to do. No announcements or anything I was supposed to make. I wanted to get you out at a decent hour because I want you all to be able to enjoy the rest of your day with your families. For all of you who are not mothers, if you're aunties, if you're godmothers, if you're spiritual guidance, if you're a mentor for anybody, you celebrate this day. The time you put in nurturing somebody's life is just what a mother does. And so you're helping someone. You're guiding someone along the way. So celebrate yourself. Amen? Amen. All right, let's do this real quick. AP, would you please dismiss us? We just need to hear your churchy voice real quick. Dismiss us with a little hoop on your, on your voice. Can we celebrate the gift that is Pastor Trina Harrison? Come on, you can do better than that. Listen, as she said, let's go. Let's have a good time with our mothers today. Uh, this One more time, let's thank God for the mothers that are in the house. Mother Green, we love you. We love you so much. Let's be old school. Lift your hands in the air with me. Father, we thank you because you've allowed us to come to yet another Mother's Day, and we take that not for granted. And so, Father, I decree and declare, yes, Father, I hear you. That mother that wants their child saved, do it right now, God. That mother that has a child that's been out there in the world, in the streets, bring them in, Father, so that they can hear what you have for them to do. Father, we call destiny over their life. Father, we call victory 
over their life. Father, we call anointing over their life. Father, we call purpose to come forward. Father, whatever it is that you've designed and destined them to do, we call it forth right now in Jesus' name. And so, Father, as we leave here today, Father, we pray that this week be a week of victory and not defeat. Father, I pray for jobs to come forward. Father, I pray for finances to come forward. Father, I pray for new vehicles to come forward. Father, we pray testimonies over the course of this week of how good you've been to your people and all nations DC. And so, Father, as we leave here today, we'll give your name the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.